To understand this question, we have drawn two pictures. In this first picture, we would assume that the streetcar is just driving straight ahead. And in that case, the straps would be hanging straight down. Perhaps you've experienced this while riding on a subway or something. And on the other hand, when the streetcar is turning, and in this case we've assumed it is making a right-hand turn, the straps, which were originally hanging straight down, will suddenly swing outward and form an angle with the vertical. And it is this angle here that we are trying to determine. And to do that, we're going to draw a free body diagram on the end of the strap. We're assuming all of the mass of the strap is concentrated at the end of it. And so for the free body diagram, we would have two main forces acting on it. We would have the downward gravitational force, mg, and then we would have the tension in the strap pulling upward on the mass here. So we could label that force T. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of superimpose a y and x-axis on top of our particle right here. And what we're going to need to do is actually take this tension force and break it up into its x and y components. And to do that, we would want to first draw the x and y components. So we'll go ahead and do that. We can see, hopefully, that the x component of tension would be pointing to the right. So we will simply call that Tx for now. And then we have the y component pointing straight up, and we will call that ty. Now, this angle that we are looking for in the question, theta, is actually the same as this angle right here. So we can kind of introduce the angle into our picture by labeling it right in there as theta. And from this right triangle that we've drawn, we can actually come up with expressions for t sub x and t sub y. So, for example, if we look at our angle, look at this triangle very carefully, hopefully we can see that the sine of our angle would equal the opposite side, which is t subscript x, divided by the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which is t. We can solve this for t sub x by multiplying both sides of the equation by t. The t's would cancel out on the right-hand side. So we can see that the x component of tension is t sine theta. Now, the y component can be obtained as well. We look at the diagram. We can see that the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is t sub y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is t. And then same idea, multiply both sides of this equation by t so that these t's cancel out. And we can see that the y component of tension, t subscript y, is equal to t cos theta. So these are important to keep in mind. Now, in the vertical direction, this particle, which we've assumed to be the mass of the strap, in the vertical direction, that particle is not accelerating. So what that means is that the downward gravitational force, mg, and the upward tension force, or rather the y component of tension, these would have to be equal in magnitude in order for them to cancel out and thus cause no acceleration in the vertical direction. So again, T sub y has to equal mg. So we will write that equation down as well. T subscript y will equal mg. Now let's not forget that T sub y was equal to T cos theta. So we're going to sub that in for ty, and we would have t cos theta is equal to mg. So this is an equation we're going to want to hang on to. We'll return to it shortly. Let's now talk about the horizontal direction. Now you might think there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, but don't forget that this streetcar is traveling in a circular path. And any object traveling in a circular path will have a centripetal acceleration. And we know that the centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its centripetal acceleration. Now, one thing to note about the centripetal acceleration is that it points towards the center of the circular path. It may not be obvious in this diagram, but because the streetcar is making a right-hand turn, the center of that circular trajectory would actually be located right here. You might want to imagine that you're standing on the subway looking straight ahead, and you're making a right-hand turn, and the center of that circular path would lie to your right side. And so the centripetal 
acceleration in this picture would be pointing in that direction. And again, in order to have a centripetal acceleration, you have to have a centripetal force. And if you look at the diagram carefully, the only force that's pointing to the right in this diagram would be this T subscript X, this force right here pointing to the right. No other force is doing so. So that is the centripetal force because it's pointing in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration. So for this centripetal force right here, we're going to be filling in T subscript X. But remember, T subscript X was T sine theta. So we can actually substitute T sine theta in for the T subscript X. Also, we note that centripetal acceleration is equivalent to the speed of the streetcar squared divided by the radius of its circular path. So this is the final form of the equation that's going to be useful to us. We now have these two equations, the one that we have starred in red and the one in blue. What we'll do is rewrite them on top of one another. And the reason we're going to rewrite them on top of one another will become apparent in just a moment. We're going to do a little algebraic maneuver here that's going to help us solve for the angle. We're actually going to divide these two equations. And when we do so, the tensions will cancel out because t divided by t is just 1. But sine theta divided by cos theta, we probably know from trigonometry, is tangent of theta. And then when you divide this quantity, the masses will actually cancel out, leaving you with v squared over r divided by g. And you can further rewrite and simplify the right-hand side as v squared over gr. Finally, to solve for the angle, you would take the inverse tangent on both sides. So if you did it on both sides, that tangent would cancel. And then the right side, you'd have inverse tangent of v squared over gr. So now it's time to plug in the known values. The question stated that the speed was 16, and it's in kilometers per hour. And so we're actually going to need to make a conversion there. And then the radius is 9.1. So because we have to do a conversion, we'll make some room here. So we're going to convert the speed. We're going to do this very carefully. Again, the speed was given as 16 kilometers per hour. So you can write that as 16 kilometers over one hour. But then you're going to multiply by one kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. This way, the kilometers cancel. And then you need to multiply by one hour is 3,600 seconds. And if you do it that way, these hours will cancel out. And looking carefully, we can see we have meters per second. Now, don't forget that the speed is squared, so you have to keep the squared right there. Divided by g, which has the standard value of 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by the radius, which again was 9.1 meters. So set your calculator to degree mode and carefully type this into your calculator and when you do so you should get an angle of about 12.5 degrees so this would be the correct answer to the question